Hey, what's going on, everybody? Taking a break from the normal content today to bring you Roll for Chat GPT. <laughs> Taking a break from the normal content today to bring you Roll for Chat GPT. Let's get to it. All right, so I got an instance of Chat GPT open here, and we're going to get started. I said, let's play D&D. You can make two characters for us to play with. You will play with one. I will play with the other. Make sure to set the stat blocks, backgrounds, and all the fun stuff like starting items and things like that. Uh, you will also be the DM, and as a DM, you should regularly have me roll if I'm taking an action, for example. So basically, if there's something that you would normally have to roll for, I just want to make sure that ChatGPT will have me roll for it. Um, so with that prompt, let's get started and see what ChatGPT has to cook up. <laughs> Sure, let's play some D&D. &D. Here are the two characters I've created for us. The first one is going to be called Kenthril Shadowcaster, a half-elf, half elf half <laughs> a half-elf, ah, a, a half-elf warlock. That is hard to say for me for some reason. <laughs> Kenthril is very good with charisma. And then we also have Durgrim Stonefish. Stonefist is a dwarf fighter who's a soldier, and they have a pretty good strength and constitution. I, I feel like that's fairly good for a fighter. Um, let's see, as the DM, I'll provide descriptions of the environment and any non-playable characters NPCs we encounter. I will let you know uh, when you need to make rolls and what you need to roll for. Let's get started. I think I want to play with Ken. But let's have ChatGPT flesh them out a little bit. Can you provide the personalities of each character for me? So I don't want to really care about if they're like chaotic good or chaotic neutral or stuff like that. Uh, in this instance, we're going to treat it a little bit more loose and lightly. Uh, I want to see if ChatGPT can just give me a general description so I can know how to act as my character. Um, like if Kenthril is a very uh, stoic kind of a person, then I want him to act stoic. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, but let's see. Kenthril is a half elf warlock who comes from a family of powerful wizards. Despite their magical pedigree, Kenthril always felt drawn to the darker and more mysterious aspects of magic. They're fiercely independent and confident in their abilities, but can sometimes be aloof and distant from others. Kenthril is always seeking to increase their knowledge and power, even if it means making questionable deals or taking dangerous risks. Durgrim Stonefist is a dwarf fighter who spent most of his life as a soldier in, the, in his clan's army. He's gruff and straightforward with no nonsense attitude towards life. Durgrim sounds like a fantastic buddy cop film character. <laughs> Oh, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> oh, man. Durgrim values loyalty, honor above all else, and can be fiercely protective of those he considers his friends or allies. He has particular distaste for magic. He's what? <laughs> oh, man. Durgrim is going to really, really enjoy Kenthril, and I think that's who I'm going to be playing, so... Um. <laughs> he has a particular distaste for magic and tends to be suspicious of those who wield it. Despite his gruff exterior, Durgrim is fiercely loyal and will always stand by his companions in battle. I mean, it's obvious that we have to play Kenthril at this point, right? Like, there is no choice here. So I'm just going to tell the chatbot that I'm going to play Kenthril. So let's do that. I will play Kenthril. And you can play Durgrim. Let's get started. Great, you find yourself standing in the middle of a bustling marketplace, surrounded by stalls selling everything from exotic spices to rare gems. The sounds of merchants haggling and the crowds chattering fill the air. As you take in your surroundings, you notice a commotion off to the side of a market. A group of rough-looking men are harassing a small shopkeeper, pushing him and demanding money. What would you like to do? I think at this point, Kenthril is probably just going to poke Durgrim and say, let's check it out. So um, in this also, I'm not going to type fantastic. So I obviously know that let's is apostrophe here. 
just go with it. I am a lazy typer and I'm trying to make sure that I get these messages across as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, but let's see what we got coming up now. Okay. Durgrim grunts in agreement. Mm, that's Durgrim. Mm. <laughs> uh, and moves towards the commotion, his hands resting on the hilt of his battle axe. As you approach, the group of men turn to face you, eyeing you warily. One of the men, a burly human with a scar across his cheek, steps forward and says, This ain't none of your business, strangers. We just collecting a little bit of debt, that's all. Durgrim scowls at the man, harassing a defenseless shopkeeper ain't no way to collect debt. Stand aside and let us handle this peacefully. The man sneers at Durgrim, peacefully, eh? I don't think you understand the situation here. We're not just gonna let you interfere, it's gonna cost you. The man and his companions draw their weapons and they ready themselves for a fight. It looks like they're about to get, things are about to get ugly. What would you like to do? Huh. Well, as Kenthril and me being interested in magic and being in the pursuit of magic, I think Kenthril would like to start casting some magic. So um, I'm also going to ask ChatGPT, by the way, what are my spells here? So uh, make sure to pick level one spells and stuff like that. Okay, Kenthril nods in agreement and draws their wand. Ready to fight as a warlock, Kenthril knows a variety of spells. Here are spells that Kenthril knows and can cast. Eldritch Blast, Mage Hand, Minor Illusion and Prestidigitation. Okay, Prestidigitation, I think Minor Illusion and Mage Hand all make sense. Uh, I don't know what Eldritch Blast is, but we're just gonna roll with it for now. I am above the law! <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, which spells would you like to prepare for this fight? Remember that as a warlock, you can only cast a limited number of spells between long and short rest. Hey, that's pretty good. I like that. That's, that's actually pretty cool. So in this instance, I just kind of wanted to roll with whatever ChatGPT produces because I think it'd be kind of fun. Uh, even if it's inaccurate, who cares? Let's see where this goes. <laughs> so let's see. Sure thing, for the sake of simplicity, let's let's assume Kenthril has prepared their spells for the day and can cast any of the spells they know during this encounter. As you draw your weapons, the ground the group of men rush towards you, weapons at the ready. Durgrim char charges forward, his shields raised. While Kenthril stays back and begins to cast spells. Roll for initiative. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to roll a d20. So let's do it. And we get a three. That's fantastic. I rolled a three. Let's see what we get. Durgrim with his battle experience rolls a 15 because everybody knows battle experience is what you need for a dice roll. <laughs> Uh, as the thugs rush towards him, Durgrim swings his battle axe in a wide arc, striking one of the men in the chest and causing him to stumble back. It's now Kenthril's turn. What spell would you like to cast? Remember, you can use your action to cast a spell, and you can also use your bonus action to cast a certain spell. Yeah, that's pretty cool, too. So, um, is the person who got hit close to see what they have to say yes the person Durgum struck with battle axes within five feet of you um let um what spell can cause damage let's just find out probably eldritch blast i guess yeah eldritch blast is a spell that can cause damage um by the way uh for those curious i've played probably with three campaigns of DD, so um i make commit some sacrilegious stuff here you're just gonna have to deal with it <laughs> Uh, it's a ranged spell attack that deals force damage and would like would you like to cast Eldritch Blast on one of the thugs? Yes. Kenthro points their wand at the injured thug and fires a beam of crackling energy towards them. Kenthro rolls a 19 to hit, dealing 7 points of force damage to the thug. The thug staggers back, clutching his chest. The remaining thugs continue to close in with their weapons at the ready. So ChatGPT actually did make a mistake here. If you remember, I said to have me roll for things. It's nice to see that I rolled a 19. However, I would have liked to roll that 19. So, 
I'm just going to make sure to give that correction. You're right, my apologies. Since you're playing Kenthril, let's have you roll to hit for damage. You have a plus five spec, uh, spell attack bonus with Eldritch Blast, and it deals one d10 plus three force damage on hit. Roll a d20 and add five to the roll to hit the target. Then roll a d10 and add three to roll for damage. Hey, that's pretty cool, so let's do that. So, okay, I'm gonna roll my d20, and we get 12. Yes, a roll of 17 plus your spell attack hits, for, hits the target. A roll a d10 and add three to roll for the damage. This is kind of cool. I didn't expect this to go nearly this well, so let's see what we can get for the damage. So we're gonna roll a d10 and add three. So let's get our d10 on the board and let's just roll that. Oops, d10, there we go. Let's just go with that, five. Great, your Eldritch Blast hits the thug square in the chest, dealing eight force damage. The thug stumbles back, looking badly injured. It's now Durgrim's turn. What would you like to do? Um, don't, f so I'm gonna remind you here to act for Durgrim. Don't forget, you are Durgrim. Just let me know the outcomes of your rolls and attacks as they are. My apologies for the confusion earlier. Durgrim takes advantage of the opportunity created by Kenthril's attack and swings his battle axe at the injured thug. Durgrim rolls an 18 to hit. That's impressive, Durgrim. Great job. Uh, and deals eight slashing damage with his attack. The thug falls to the ground unconscious. The remaining thugs look startled by the quick, brutal attack. One of them breaks and runs away, while the other two look uncertain. It's now the thug's turn. One of them, one of the remaining thugs swings his club at Durgrim, but misses with a roll of eight. The other thug tries to run away as well, but Durgrim gets an opportunity attack as he runs away. Durgrim rolls a 21 to hit and deals six slashing damage with his attack, killing the thug instantly. Combat has ended, the alley is quiet again, and the only sounds are the moans of the wounded thugs. What would you like to do next? That is a very interesting outcome. So the first thing that I notice is I did eight damage after Durgrim had actually done some damage to the first thug uh, and it didn't kill the thug. And then this second thug uh, took all of six slashing damage and died. And then everybody else pieced out. So my thinking here is that uh, maybe we killed the leader, but it's possible that uh the hp values might be a little bit different i have no idea you know again this is just making stuff up on the fly but it's kind of cool though right um okay so combat's ended what will we like to do next um let's question the th that are wounded we get durgrim approaches one of the wounded thugs and grabs him by the collar of her shirt demanding answers the thug looks terrified but eventually tells you that they were hired by a local crime boss to rob the travelers and merchants in the city. The boss is named Gordak. That is a cool name. The other thug is unconscious, but you could try to revive him if you want to question him as well. What would you like to do next? I don't feel like reviving him, so let's uh, find out more about this Gornak. Durgrim nods in agreement, and you both decide to gather information about Gornak and his operations. You ask around the city, and you hear rumors that Gornak is a ruthless crime lord who controls a large portion of criminal activity in the city. He is known for using intimidation and violence to keep his underlings in line, and he is rumored to have connections to some of the more unsavory elements in the city, including corrupt officials and powerful criminal organizations. After a few days of asking around, wow, a few days is just gone. <laughs> you hear about a group of adventurers who've been hired to take down Gornak and his operation. They are said to be staying at a nearby inn called the Rusty Sword. What would you like to do next? Um, I like that we just kind of flash forwarded to, you know, um, Days later, you find a group that's ready to kill this guy. Do you really want to go kill this guy? Let's go kill this guy. So Durgrim nods in agreement, and you both head towards the Rusty Sword Inn. As you approach the inn, you see a group of adventurers sitting at the table in the common room. They look like a diverse group with a human cleric, a half-elf rogue, a dwarf fighter, 
and a tiefling sorcerer. You approach the table and introduce yourselves. They seem friendly enough and invite you to sit down and share a drink. You explain that you're interested in taking down Gornak and his operation, and you and they tell you that their process of gathering information about Gornak's stronghold. They suggest that you all work together to take down Gornak, and you all agree to join forces. The group explains that they've learned that Gornak's stronghold is located in a fortified warehouse in the city's industrial district. They suggest that you all meet up tomorrow to plan the attack. What would you like to do next? couple things here one i'm a little disappointed that we didn't get a chance to kind of have that conversation that you would get to have in this situation um it just decided that i wanted to take down gornak but what if i decided i wanted to join gornak and stop these folks i guess i can still make that happen in a sense um, but, you know, let's just go along with it and see where this goes. So the next day, you and Durgrim meet up with a group of adventurers at a nearby tavern. You all sit down and begin to plan your attack on Gornak's stronghold. The group shares the information they've gathered about the layout of the warehouse, the number of guards patrolling the area. After some discussion, you all come up with a plan to sneak into the warehouse, though a back entrance, oh, through a back entrance, <clears throat> and take the guards one by one. Once the guards are eliminated, you'll make your way to Gornak's office and confront him. I'm glad to hear that a criminal boss has an office like that. It's kind of nice. <laughs> the group suggests that you split into two teams. Splitting up always works. <laughs> One team will sneak into the warehouse through the back entrance. The other team will create a distraction at the front of the warehouse. You and Durgrim agree to be the distraction team. I like that I agreed to this without even being a part of the conversation. Uh, apparently, it doesn't matter. Uh, as night falls, you plan your you put your plan into motion. The distraction causes the team's commotion at the front of the warehouse, drawing the guard's attention away from the back entrance. Meanwhile, the other team sneaks in and takes out the guards one by one. Great job, other team. Bravo. Aces. <laughs> um, after the guards are eliminated, you and Durgrim make your way into Gornak's office. Wow, we're already in the big boss's room. You burst in weapons ready and confront Gornak. He sneers at you and orders his remaining guards to attack. The ensuing battle is fierce, but your combined efforts, you and the adventurer and the, 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 the <laughs> you and the adventurers manage to defeat Gornak and his guards. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. What? <laughs> so you mean to tell me? You just basically, and they just happily ever after, Gornak, effectively, is what just happened. I'm done here. I, I'm, thanks. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I guess let's uh let's finish this up just for the sake of posterity, right? <laughs> With Gornak defeated, you and the adventurer search the warehouse and find evidence of his criminal activities. You turn the evidence over to the city guard and collect the reward that was promised for taking down Gornak. I don't remember discussing this reward. Uh maybe I missed it. You and Durgrim exchange a satisfied nod, buddy cop. Buddy cop picture? <laughs> love it <laughs> knowing that you've made the city a safer place by taking down one of the most notorious criminals <laughs> they literally so chat gpt literally and they happily and they went away and lived happily ever after um within probably about what is that like seven prompts it started off so well. It took my role for initiative. It said my mistake, let me do the damage and had me like roll things and it set stat blocks and and then it just kind of fell apart. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can at least say this. Um, this is pretty funny. Um, I definitely enjoyed this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this here and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's honestly hilarious, but uh, this should also go to show that for as much as that you could rely on this as a tool to help you, 
please keep in mind that it is not perfect. It is far from perfect. And uh, it still needs a lot of help to make sure that you can get what you want out of it. Clearly, I didn't in this case. I just got a happily ever after in D&D in like six or seven prompts after getting started. So <laughs> uh, with that, we didn't learn much today, but I am DB. You are you. Let's keep rocking. And I guess we didn't learn anything today, but let's keep learning. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Peace out.